Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be repairing the final delamination on the Hobie 16 between the forward and the aft pylon. Since we're going to install portholes in a future video here, I'm going to go ahead and cut the access port um, smaller than the diameter of those portholes, which is going to allow us to use clamping pressure during the bond process. So historically we've used the fastener method where we rely on the threads in the thin base laminate to apply the pressure to close that gap. Some of the times it's not perfect, um, but it's the only way we can do a blind bond. Um, so this time we're gonna be able to repair a majority of the repair by using positive pressure via clamping. So this guarantees that we can completely close that void after we inject epoxy, allowing us to get a more consistent bond. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments down below and also let me know if you found this video helpful. Anyways, let's get into it. So now we got the cookie cut out and as we can see in here, the core is, you know, uh, three quarters of an inch delaminated. Um, so this gap in here, we'll be able to slather some nice epoxy, clamp it together. So that way we get a nice bond all along the edge of where we're gonna put the port hole. Now that we have a hole cut out, let's go ahead and take a look inside and make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. Well, would you look at that? It's a subscribe button. Didn't expect to see that here. While you're down there, go ahead and drop any comments or questions below. Now let's go ahead and get back into the repair. We're gonna start by drilling holes before we start the bonding process so everything's ready to go and we can just move from one bonding process into the other. Now you'll see here that I'm adjusting the hole pattern a little bit because of the structure of the boat being in the way. After we cut the hole open in the center here, we can see that this D-lam is pretty big. So all in all, when I measured it, it was about three quarters of an inch gap from the top laminate to the core. In order to fix this to put in the access ports, we're gonna need to epoxy in here and then clamp it closed, ideally spreading all the epoxy out um, whatever drips in, we'll catch with some garbage bag in there. But in order to clamp it up, we're going to use just some normal clamps as well as just a piece of wood. These are just stakes for trimming line um, on top and on the bottom. So the clamp will push onto these to distribute the pressure and Ideally, we get a better bond throughout the entire area. All right, so I mix three pumps together instead of my normal eight. Um, we have a pretty thick consistency. We might need to thicken it up a little bit, we'll see, but we'll start by injecting uh, essentially this square around here, and then we'll go in with the tongue depressor. We'll probably have to break it down and try and spread it around. The next one, definitely gonna mix more epoxy.
right, and that's a good sign. We can see some epoxy squeezing out. That's exactly what we want to see. And we'll go ahead and do this other side. So that took a little bit, but we were able to get both of these on and we do see some squeeze out on this opposite side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back, mix up some more epoxy for the rest of these areas and start using the fastener technique to pull everything together now that we've got the majority of it done. So now we got the entire D lamb filled up with epoxy and screwed together. Some definitely worked better than others. Um, now if we look in here, there's still a little bit of a gap between the two, but it's pretty much mostly together. I can see a little bit of a fillet between the two. Um, so once this is done curing, we'll come back through and make sure that we wipe some epoxy that's thickened a lot um, and we'll seal that edge and close up any gaps and maybe inject those gaps if we can. All right, so we got the next batch of epoxy mixed up for the right hand hole. Um, got a little bit more this time, probably about 25 or 33% more, um, but instead of using the trash bag, uh, grocery bag wrap. We're gonna use just blue painters tape on one side um, and hopefully this will be enough to still allow these to release. see some of the epoxy start to pool up right here. So we're going to go ahead and take these holes off. So hopefully it spreads to the other ones.
fill in the rest of these holes and get them fastened up the same way we did on the other side. This, uh, this side looks like it's been a lot better. The core closed all the way. Now we got this whole entire hole fastened and glued. And so in contrast to the last one, if we look in here, we can see that the core is nice and tight to both the upper and bottom laminate. So we should have pretty good results from this one, but we'll wait at least 24 hours and take a look and see. All right, it's been almost 48 hours now. Um, so we'll go ahead and release these and see if it holds. If we hear a lot of cracking, that's not a good sign. Oh, so far so good. Let's release this other side, which is gonna be the worst side as far as the gap goes. A little bit of settling it sounded like. Let's go ahead and remove our clamps. Set them off to the side. All right. This one came out just fine. That one came up just fine, perfect. Let's see if we can get these off now. That one popped right off. And then some of the tape stuck on this one, but it's fine. All in all, it looks pretty good. There's a little bit more of a gap on this outboard side, but this inboard side looks like it rebonded pretty well. Yeah, so this is the downside. We can see right here that the um, inside ply is pulled right off of the core. So this core is just old. The boat's just old, so there's not going to be much else we can do about that. So on the left hand side now, because of these bags, it's going to be a little bit harder to see, but hopefully we can still see some pretty good stuff once we take them off. So we'll go ahead and release the outboard side. Plus a little bit of a, a judder. And then we'll release the inboard side. And that seems to be holding pretty well. Set these off to the side again. Let's see if we can remove these. And all that will come off pretty easily. So we did get a little bit of fog in the bond line, some of the plastic bag. I tried to pull as much out as I could. That one's screwed in there. So one of these screws, this one, I believe. Is actually holding that in or this one. Um, I believe it's this one. So we'll go ahead and pop that out and then pull everything out. But looking at this side, it looks really good. Um, we do have a void up here and likewise on this other side and the IML ply is disbonded as well. So just a factor of bad core. Um, there's nothing much we could do with that other than replace the entire boat. But um, got some pretty good squeeze out there and it looks like everywhere else is pretty good as far as the squeeze out goes as well. So this should be, you know, nice and solid. So I didn't end up recording taking the fasteners out. So there's a little bit of an abrupt end to this video, but in the future video, we're gonna be going ahead and prepping the boat for the porthole installation and painting. So stay tuned for those videos and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy them.